We are given the integral from 0 to 3 of x minus 1.5 raised to the 2 over 3 power and then plus 1. And if we use a calculator, we will get about 5.3587. And in this video, we will compare the midpoint rule and the trapezoidal rule when n is equal to 3. And let's see who wins. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started. So perhaps let's compute the delta x right here, which is just b minus a over n. Well, a is 0 and b is 3, so we have 3 minus 0 over n, we set it to be 3. So this right here is equal to 1, right? And right here, of course, let me just indicate that f of x is equal to this right here, which is x minus 1.5 raised to the 2 over 3 power and then plus 1. And uh, again, you don't really have to draw this function. Let's draw a number line though, and we are looking at the interval from 0 to 3. So I will say this right here is 0, and this right here is 3. And we have to cut this into 3 pieces, because as we discussed earlier, n is equal to 3. So let's just go ahead and put like this and that right here. Of course, we're talking about 0, 1, 2, 3. Alright, so let's get started with the midpoint rule, m3. First off, we will have to use the delta x, which is just going to be 1. And then, remember, we have to find the midpoint of all this right here, right? So the middle of this and that is just 0 0.5. Okay, not bad. Next, we have this right here, which is 1.5. Also not bad. And then, of course, 2.5. Very nice. So I'm going to plug in this into the function first. And the coefficient is just 1 for the midpoint rule. So we have f of 0 0.5. Good. And the next, we add f of 1.5. And then we add f of 2.5. So that's pretty good. And then just use a calculator if you like. And let me tell you, for this right here, we actually get exactly 5. Because we actually have three very nice rectangles. So you can draw a picture if you will like. But that's pretty much the answer for that. Now, let's do the trapezoidal rule when n is equal to 3. So first, we will have to have the delta x divided by 2. So it will be 1 over 2, because the delta x is equal to 1. And then, remember, the coefficient for the first term is 1, so we just have f, and then we'll be using this for the x values. So the first one is 0, and then we add the coefficients in the middle will be 2, right? So we will have 2 times f of the next x value, which is 1, and then 2 times f of the next x value, and then for the last one, the coefficient is also 1, so I'm just going to be plugging uh, f of 3 right here. And uh, that's it. And if you use a calculator to do this, you will get approximately 5.5703. So, ladies and gentlemen, have a look. Which one is better? Is this still midpoint rule? No. This right here is better. Oh my god, let me tell you. It took me so long to come up with this example on my own that I, f I was so happy that I finally found an example that the midpoint rule, the, sorry, the trapezoid rule is actually better than the midpoint rule. Yeah, and this example is not like a uh, boring one. It's actually a very interesting one. It has a curve at least. But let's talk about why this is the case though. Isn't that we have been talking about the midpoint rule is better than the trapezoidal rule? But how come this time it didn't, it didn't do its job, huh? Well, the reason that we have been talking about the midpoint rule is usually better than the trapezoidal rule is because we look at the what? Error bound formula, right? And let me just remind you guys on the side. For this right here, let's put on EM right, in the absolute value. This right here, we know it's less than or equal to k times b minus a to the third power over 24n squared. And then for the trapezoidal rule, let's say et right here. This right here is less than or equal to pretty much the same thing. We also have the k and then b minus a to the third power, but over. Instead of the 24, we only have 12, and then we have n squared. Well, as you can see, Right here, the denominator is bigger, therefore, the whole thing is smaller. So, the idea is that we are making a smaller error. That means the midpoint rule should be better most of the time. The reason that this right here, they don't apply to our function, it's because 
we have to pay attention to the k. So let me just remind you guys what the k is. And both k are the same. Remember the k is the maximum value of the absolute value of the second derivative. So I'm going to just tell you guys that uh, we'll put this down, right? k is the maximum value of the absolute value of the second derivative of the function on the interval that we care, which is a and b. Alright, so as you can see, we are dealing with the second derivative, and perhaps this is one of the reasons why that we care about the higher order derivatives, like in the approximation methods. And uh, if you look at this function here, I will just give you guys a graph real quick. Well, the graph is actually really nice. So here you have 0 and here you have 3, and 1.5 is in the middle. And if you plug in 1.5 into the x right here, you actually just get 1. So you have a nice 1 right here, and you have a point right here. Graph that, you're going to get a bird, like looks like this. Yeah, that's what I mean, like a bird. Like you, you go to the beach and you draw the, you know, like the picture, you have the sun like this, and then you have the ocean like this, and then you have the birds. Yeah, that's what I mean. But anyway, this right here, what's this? Hey, we have a cupst, right? C U S P, or like a corner. What's up with this? Well, from calculus one, we know that this right here we cannot take the derivative, right? So at this point, I will just tell you we cannot take the derivative here. And if we cannot take the derivative here, we don't even think about the second derivative. Let me write this down as this right here is not differentiable, so I'm just going to abbreviate that as not dable. The first derivative doesn't exist, don't even think about the second one. And if we don't have the second derivative, let me tell you, these formulas, these error bound formulas, they don't hold anymore. They cannot promise anything anymore. That's why we had a chance that the trapezoidal rule could be the midpoint rule, and it actually did. So that's exactly what I did. Oh my god, I was so 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 happy that I finally found out an example for that. And an example that actually has curve. Yeah. And if you guys want to see how I came out with this, you guys can check my other video. And in the next video, I will also show you guys another example that the midpoint rule beats the Simpsons rule. It also took me a while. Actually, it was by accident that I found out that example. So go ahead and check that out. But anyway, as always, that's it.